All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the top beautiful, postcard perfect Monday morning here in the end times on Monday, August 2nd, 2021. And I got to figure out what to do with this gorgeous day. But before I head out into paradise here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, uh, I stumbled on this story. I think this story was on Yahoo News for about five minutes before it got ripped down last night. No doubt uh, somebody with a twisted sense of humor has been fired at Yahoo News today, but uh, I'm assuming this story will not get uh, a medical misinformation uh, strike against me. I have no fucking idea what this story is about. I have no fucking clue what any of this means, but it's, I think, for whatever the hell it is, it is the second best uh, Corona Panic Chronicle I have ever read. Of course, Deb Ozarko will always uh, live on as having the single best Corona Panic Chronicle, but coming in a close second to you, Deb Ozarko, is a woman I have never heard of named Melanie Hamlet writing for this outfit called the Daily Beast. And <laughs> somehow, some uh, junior editor on a Sunday evening actually managed to uh, get this posted on Yahoo News in the mainstream media before it was ripped down uh, and someone fired. So... Uh, Melanie Hamlet, uh, take it away, whatever the hell you're talking about here, darling. Uh, I love the way you say it. <clears throat> From super spreader sex houses to nude beach fistfights, vaccinated partying, not all it's cracked up to be. Okay, so, you know, all of this talk about unvaccinated partying all over the mainstream media. Melanie Hamlet and the Daily Beast are going to take a peek into what it looks like for a bunch of vaccinated people partying. And we're going to go over to France for this dispatch from the end times. Okay. This is one of the all-time greatest opening sentences I have ever read regarding the corona panic. <clears throat> After being woken up by the sound of a little dog below me humping his favorite teddy bear, I crawl down the ladder of a kid's bunk bed and head downstairs to assess the damage of last night's debauchery. Cigarette butts, empty wine bottles, and half-eaten baguettes litter the kitchen and pool area of this mini French mansion my friend Jackie is currently dog-sitting at. There is puke around the toilet in the cave downstairs. A hot Frenchie sashaying through the kitchen in his gunties, still high on X, and a middle-aged dude starfished face-up on these people's shimancy leather couch, completely naked. God damn, it is good to be going back to normal. Before I was washing bananas with Purell and wearing rubber gloves everywhere, all pointless, <clears throat> I was a wild, perpetually single lady in my early 40s having the best time and sex of my life here in France. By the time I got my second dose of Pfizer in June, I am sharing a life and home with my husband. What? And have adopted a traumatized rescue dog 
who is way too obsessed with me. <clears throat> the corona panic seems to have brought about either extreme change or heavy doses of the exact same. Most people I know here, you know, in France, are entering the vaccinated stage of this global nightmare as new, sometimes jacked up on Red Bull versions of their old selves, for better or worse. But some are like me, emerging from this police-enforced cocoon of three lockdowns and never-ending curfews, flapping our mangled butterfly wings, no idea how to fly, not really sure what just happened, but quite certain we ain't caterpillars no more. When the government finally ended all the curfews, outdoor mask mandates, lockdowns, and permission slips to leave our homes and then let us back into restaurants, bars, and even our beloved sex clubs, <clears throat> I assumed France would collectively bust through the pandemic door, Kool-Aid man style, free at last. But, come to find out, a lot of people, including all of my wilder friends here, were not too bothered by a global crisis to begin with. They have been partying hard throughout the whole damn pandemic, not the least bit deterred by lockdowns, curfews, or even the threat of a 135 euro fine for defying either. I, on the other hand, was like that annoying teacher's pet in class, filling out my little permission slips every time I left home, staying within the allotted one kilometer and later the 10 kilometer radius from our flat and making it back long before curfew. Always. Yet, I was stopped and questioned by the police four times, despite being a bit of a rebel in all other areas of my life, I am not one to fuck with the police. Maybe because I'm American and have a fear of people who murder their constituents. I don't have revolution in my genes like the French and would never throw bags of shit at the blues, meaning the cops, I think. Or maybe it's because this was not my first police not letting you leave your house rodeo. Sleeping in kid jail and spending a whole summer on house arrest as a teen primed me for French lockdowns, but really, I was just plain terrified of the thought of me drowning in my own mucus all alone. That fear wasn't unfounded either. I had prior immune and lung issues as well as 11 family members here in France with COVID, too, in the ICU. Even though I ended up breaking good during this pandemic, most people I know, even the super careful and responsible ones, were doing things the French way, drawing their own conclusions about which rules were meant to be broken. My husband, I, I cannot believe this woman is married, my husband played by the book but never bothered to fill out those tedious permission slips. My friend Cecile would use an erasable pen on her so she could go see her boyfriend one kilometer farther away than the lockdowns allowed. My buddy Julian would wear gym clothes to go drink by the river with friends during the first lockdown when we were only allowed outside for one hour a day to exercise. Whenever he spotted a cop, he would just start jogging. And then there are the folks who did pretty much whatever the fuck they wanted to do. It wasn't just young people either. 
My divorced mom friend, Sylvie, like a lot of my buddies in their 30s and 40s, was partying even harder than usual. <clears throat> At Easter brunch, she snorted coke for the first time in 15 years, then danced in her underwear until 5 a.m. <clears throat> Since the second lockdown, my friend Julian, who wore the jogging clothes to drink, <clears throat> has been partying regularly with a group of parents in one of Lyon's many 14th century wine caves underground. They would throw up a disco ball, take a bunch of X, and dance all night in a sound and ventilation proof room made of rock, hooking up with each other indiscriminately, but only above the waist. <clears throat> Julian was actually complaining about restrictions ending. His parent friends are all too busy now that France is open for business again. Do you see why I stayed home? I have always thought of masks as pandemic condoms. <laughs> I love it. Uh, pandemic condoms. Why didn't I think of that? I have always thought of masks as pandemic condoms and COVID as an STD minus the fun reason for getting it. Sharing air with any of them indoors was, in my mind, like sharing air with every maskless and drunk person they had shared air with. It's simple math, really. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I have become the kind of woman who watches her codependent dog on a baby cam from a block away to see if he can stay home alone for more than 20 minutes without annoying the shit out of the neighbors. He still can't. Once I got my hands on that second Pfizer dose, though, I could finally go back to normal and socialize. Only now I've got to somehow do that while also er merging my old choose-your-own-adventure yeehaw self with the settled and finally respected by my parents' version of Melanie. My first night out is at France's annual music festival, Fete de la Musique, where bands and DJs play randomly all over town. I feel a bit like that mermaid entering a whole new world shoulder to shoulder with drunk strangers walking on my newly vaccinated but wobbly legs right out of the gate. My senses are overloaded like way more intense than any acid trip in high school. Techno music blaring, drunk people spitting when they close talk everyone doing the French, I guess, kiss on the cheek, beautiful women blowing bubbles from giant French windows above, booze, weed, B.O., and so much cigarette smoke, it is France. The mask mandate is over now, but I am not ready to breathe this close to people who give zero fucks about airborne pathogens. I head down to the river where there's more space and spend the rest of the night dancing to shiny horns of all sizes being played by people dressed up as unicorns and clowns. I haven't drank in 17 years, but I am straight up hung over the whole next day, likely from both a contact high and sensory overload. But the festival also left me craving more, desperate to finally go back to the familiar I eat duck something something on a restaurant patio, and it is thrilling. I cheer on Team France at an outside bar patio full of belligerent fans screaming, oh, 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 until we lose. Boo. I even venture to places I have never before had the courage to go. 
a local nudist beach where, I kid you not, a fight breaks out. We're talking old naked men rolling on the ground, their dicks swinging in the chaos, the police being called. Days later, a gal pal convinces me to finally try a French sex club where masks are the only thing anyone is sporting. During all of this, I'm always pretty safe either outdoors and somewhat distanced or indoors and masked. Then comes the slumber party at the mini mansion. Finally, I am going to hang out with my party animal friends all together for the first time since the corona panic began. <clears throat> the owners uh, of the mini mansion gave my friend Jackie 20 bottles of wine and permission to throw a party in exchange for taking care of their teddy bear humping dog, Leopold. Their teddy bear humping dog, Leopold. Since Jackie and most of our friends are single women, she invites as many men as possible. My sweet husband offers to stay home. Okay, I, I've got to uh, I, I've got to nominate this woman's husband as the single biggest clueless fucking moron on planet Earth. Could you imagine being married to this woman? My sweet husband offers to stay home while his wife heads off to a slumber party at a sex club. <clears throat> anyway. My sweet husband offers to stay home and take care of our 80-pound baby because he is amazing like that. Then he even drops me off at 2 p.m. with my sleeping bag and an armful of baguettes. I, I can only wonder what this woman's husband was doing uh, while uh, his wife uh, was off at a slumber party at a sex club. I guarantee you, darling, he was not taking care of your dog. He had plans of his own that did not include you. <clears throat> anyway, back to the story. Uh, the party is a mix of Frenchies and, ex and expats mostly single or divorced in their 30s and 40s, though one is old enough to have a teenage son who he brings along with him. I'm not used to having a boyfriend in general, much less a husband, so when drunk men immediately hit on me, I flash my ring, sorry, to nip that shit in the bud. I am the only coupled person here except for one girl who brought along her boyfriend and two of his hottest co-workers, all of them cops. This is basically a sausage fest of middle-aged folks who rage even harder than me in my high school days. Besides a massive hailstorm, the party is just your typical drunk fest carnality. The cops, you know, the ones there at the party, either do not know or don't care that Julian and company are doing coke down in the basement and everyone but me is stoned out of their minds. The guy who walks around in a speedo with a semi-boner the entire party ends up puking all night long. My divorced mom friend Sylvie doesn't want him to meet a Jimi Hendrix fate in that basement, so she tucks him in bed with a trash can in a room upstairs with a child's name spelled in colorful wood letters on the door. I end up playing mom also, but to the dog, Leopold, the teddy bear humper, and carry his anxious ass around the second half of the night. But Leopold is a great cock block to that drunk guy who keeps trying to dance with me. 
Luckily, that dude finds a willing volunteer to fuck him in the basement real quick before he comes back upstairs and passes out naked on that fancy leather couch. At 5 a.m., I settle into my bunk bed covered in kitty clothes and stuffed animals with the soundtrack of Speedo Guy's sporadic vomiting next door. When I text Anthony, I guess Anthony is uh, her husband, it occurs to me this is our first night apart since that life-changing day we decided to confine together 16 months ago. I had spent most of my 41 previous years sleeping in my own bed or truck all alone. That's what I have always known and even preferred. But as I am laying here now, it's fucking weird not having Anthony next to me. Too quiet. I miss his snoring and that of our therapy dog who needs therapy himself. Man, I wish they were here with me now, even if it would be a little tight. With so much vaccine inequity and now this Delta variant junk show, it is pretty clear the corona panic isn't anywhere near being over. In fact, all the partiers who were not fully vaccinated got COVID at that pool party and spent a week in bed. My little Pfizer bender was fun and all, but it's over for now. I am still a rule breaker at heart and an adventurer in every other area, but I am all about calculated risk. Now that I am playing on team Melanthony, spelled M-E-L-A-N-T-H-O-N-Y. I am all about calculated risks now that I am playing on Team Melanthony. I have no fucking clue what that last sentence meant, and I had very little clue what any of that uh, Corona Panic essay meant. But anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed reading it. Uh, and I think uh, she is pro-vaccine. But amen, Sister Melanie Hamlet for uh, <laughs> getting on to Yahoo News and the mainstream media for about five minutes. But anyway, now that I've gotten that off my chest, uh, I need to head over to, Collap to Collapse Chronicles and pick out which doom and gloom story of the we are so fucked story of the day to share with you and then get out there and enjoy this beautiful day, although it probably won't be in a French sex club. I suggest you get out there and enjoy all of these sex clubs you can while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, yeah, little dog, we got to come back with a real rant. <laughs>